push for change is part of a bigger thing that's happening across the, the country. But what we bring into communities like Aurelia and Barry and Midland is a heightened level of awareness to what's already going on. And hopefully what we're doing is connecting people and resources. So long after we've left, there is a deeper conversation going on. You know, the more we see a deterioration across the country, the more we have to step back and reevaluate our social contract with, with, with its citizens. And, and Canada is a great country. And so I think that by raising the volume of the conversation, the push for change, you know, gets engagement like this. And this stuff is gold. It is sometimes the awareness stuff is far more valuable than the dollars that are thrown in the bucket. I think that there needs to be a higher level of collaboration because it's not the municipality's responsibility, it's not the police's responsibility, it's not healthcare, and it's not the educators, it's all of us. But you have to put the individual first and then surround them with the particular resources they need to be most successful. So one of the things that the OPP, they initiated, and then it's kind of gone from there, um, is OCAN. So it's a really community action network, and it takes into consideration all of the collaborations. And I think there's about 53, we both sit on the steering committee for that, but 53 different organizations that are coming together to do exactly that. And I think that that's one thing that I love about Aurelia really, is that we are taking the steps that yeah. forward, which, I mean, you know, for a small town, it's pretty good. It is. Yeah. And the thing yeah, about the awesome. smaller communities, and I was saying this to you earlier is that what I what I'm encouraged by or and discouraged by is that there isn't enough dollars to support yes. this particular thing in this particular right. you go to Toronto and it's like there's that group yeah. and there's that group here there has to there has to uh, or have organically to work naturally Absolutely. work together but that that one word collaboration if you talk to Tim Richter from the Canadian Alliance and homeless mm -hmm. if you talk to Dr. Stephen Gates you talk to Melanie Redmond from away home they'll they'll tell you that the most successful models in this country that are really moving moving and, and moving forward are organizations that have created really deep levels of collaboration. <laughs> so I guess on behalf of the Georgian College Student Initiative Beneath the Blanket, we're proud to present these blankets to Linda Goodall from the Executive Director from the Lighthouse Soup Kitchen and Shelter. Um, we have with us Joe Roberts and Marie Roberts from the Push for Change. And part of the blankets here were collected on the November 25th Sleepout Challenge at Georgian College. And we're happy to hand blankets to Linda. The ceremonial <laughs> handoff. How many? How many? How many she can take? As many as she can. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, and, and on behalf of the Lighthouse and all the you know people that we serve there, uh, men and women, uh, these will definitely go to good use. I can guarantee you that. So thank you. Really appreciate that. From the push for change, I just want to say that, and uh, you know we said it earlier, but the level of engagement is what fires up the conversation. And you know there's long term that that's what we need to do in in, in the community, bringing in different different folks tapping into youth empowerment. So we're happy that the push for change was, you know, a small part of that catalyst to uh, to, to, to be here today. And, yeah. I know your goal, David, was 25 blankets. It looks like you exceeded we, that We did goal. exceed it, yes, very yeah. much so. So is it people all from Georgia College who contributed? Um, much of it came from Georgia College, yeah. faculty, staff, uh, wow. volunteers, everybody. A lot of people involved in this. Yeah. On the receiving end, as someone who was lived experience on the streets, it's not so much just about blankets. <laughs> they oh, felt no. the going. <laughs> she needs more. There we go. <laughs> she needs more. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's not just so much about the blanket. It's the uh, it's the human engagement piece. It's, yeah. So when I was you know on uh, streets of Vancouver, I heavily relied on Frontline, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't the bowl of soup although I was hungry, or the blanket because I was cold, it was that there was a human being there on the other side. One, one of the things you can do that doesn't cost anything is you can see them Absolutely. and engage you if you feel safe and <clears throat> see them as a human being. And that's one of the things that, you know, when somebody comes in from the cold and yeah. he needs a blanket. That's uh, On that note, when I first started, my first week at the lighthouse, I would open the door for our soup kitchen, it opens at 9.30, and I was just saying hi to people, and this one gentleman comes in, and I'm like, hello, good morning. And he looks at me, he says, good morning. I said, how are you? And he's like, well, I'm better now. I've told you this one. Yeah, and he said, well, I'm better now. And I said, oh, he says, well, now that I've been seen. And, and I just went, wow. Like, I said, well, you're seen here. You know, yeah. and it just, you know, like that was... That was one of those wins, if you want to say, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I saw him, and he needed that. So mm -hmm. that was pretty impactful for me, for mm -hmm. sure.